All right, today's gonna be a little bit more of a chill video, just gonna be chilling, relaxing, talking to you guys about the match from this past weekend and really going over the high-rise control specifically. This is where we started to make our comeback in the series after going down 0-2. And, you know, we had a really good high-rise control here to basically make sure that we stayed in the series and, you know, build off of that momentum going into the next two maps and end up winning the series. So obviously this was the tone setter here. Us getting this 3-0 in this high-rise control was really, really nice. And I really liked how we played it uh, for the most part. So obviously here we won the defense at the start of this map. I'll just take you through the next two rounds of this control. This is a really good map out of Kenny. You know, he turned up really big for these next three maps. You know, at the beginning of the series, he's kind of struggling just a little bit, but he really turned it up, especially in these last two rounds here. As you can see here, he's nine and eight uh, going into the round two, and then he ends up going, I believe, 30 and 15. So, you know, 21 kills to seven deaths in two rounds is absolutely insane. And I believe he gets 6K or around 6K damage for it so a huge map out of him to actually turn things around and you know help boost the entire group of guys to actually you know get this comeback going uh, when we really needed it so as you see here on this offense we kind of win the break because of a team kill here with detaches nade preds able to get up pushed up into their underground we have a full setup now where we have you know one guy on point another guy is going to try and hold this b street he can hold this reinforcements we have ag kind of pushed up in their base we have someone at the top heli we have someone on point now after winning this break off it's just really important to get Get those first few ticks in you know we're stacking the point here we're starting to you know actually get those cutoff kills from anyone trying to exit out through this defensive base over here so this is a really really good start you know obviously you don't want to be going three or four down as a defense because something like this can happen right at the start of the round and that's what we do we capitalize on it and they're playing really well you see we're capping the point playing super tight ag's got our underground stairs here if brandon can win a one-on-one -on, -one on the other side of the map that's huge unfortunately number seven does get a kill on one of our guys but it gets in Instantly traded out. AG is able to activate on Purge here, who is trying to hit throughout middle. And now we're going to be able to cap the point right away towards this B site and start transitioning over towards the A site. We see that we got all four down. Now we have some map pressure. We can start finishing this cap on towards the B site. That's going to be Kenny to keep staying on that point. And now we can also, you know, set some resources towards this A side and we can have some sort of transition here. So you see this a lot of times in pro matches. If you can get a clean three or four down and you're already capping B, you're going to start transitioning towards that A site, making sure that you're once again still capping the B point, but also starting to set up for that A point capture later on in the round. And as you see here, we're up, you know, 27 to 19 lives. This is a really good live lead for offense, especially if you're already having some you know, really good map pressure like this. And honestly, in rounds like this where you're already up eight lives and you have some type of map pressure like this with three guys already pushed up for your side and they're all spawning, you know, in their back base, it can basically end the round right then and there. So that's not unfortunately going to happen for us. You'll see what happens and why that isn't the case. But as you see here, you know, Pred's making a really nice play of actually just playing any spawners. Kenny's still capping the point. And as you saw Ant off spawn, he was able to wrap towards the A site to try and get more pressure towards there, start stacking that point so we can have a really good transition to this A side. And as you'll see here, Pred gets one kill, but Purge gets a really important two piece for the Vegas squad on the propane tank. It blows off both of our guys that are capping the point really unfortunate for us because if they don't die here from that propane tank i think the round is just completely over you know we have ag already pushed up getting some kills in their front base we have kenny capping the point and watching over the mid cut to be able to help out for anyone that might be trying to cross towards that a point and we would have those two guys stacking and once you know kenny would end up capping this point he would move on to the a point we could triple stack all we really need to do is watch you know our bottom blue pinch for anyone that might be hitting towards underground trying to pinch us this way and we would be pretty Pretty set uh, in this round. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way, especially with the propane tanks on this map. You see a lot of times people dying to explosions. So, you know, we we're trying to salvage this situation. Unfortunately, they just have numbers towards this A site. They are able to get those trades on in, and that's a big four down for them. They get those two on the A point with the explosion, and they get the other two kills on AG and Kenny. And now we have to set up another break once again. And that's, you know, something that isn't so easy on offense. You know, like I said before, on high rise control, you got a three or four down instant map pressure for your team if you get another wave it's just going to be completely hard for that offensive team to get out of their spawn and that's what's going to happen here unfortunately so as you'll see here some trades still go down brandon gets one Ant gets one and we're still having trades towards this heli side and unfortunately you know Ant's trying to push towards their base to try and get some spawn killers he actually gets killed while trying to slide and throw a stun towards this back lobby area over here so unfortunately you know nero did have the timing to kill him and that's a really important three down for them 
because we only have one guy left on the map. They can start getting some map pressure. As you see, number six already pressuring towards this left side window. He can now call out to his teammates that they can only come from the mid window and the right side. And as you see here, Kenny last alive, getting some really important kills on the left side of the map here. He gets one unattached, goes back to this B point, tries to see another spawner here. He gets another kill on Purge. Really important kills. They're now spawning towards the right side window over here. Unfortunately, Standy does get one kill in our spawn, so we have to play for him. We need to make sure that we kill this guy who's in our base. We get that kill, and now it's going to be a better push for us once we know everything is solidified. We know no one's coming from our backside, and now we can start pressuring towards the A side once again if we can get some good trades. Unfortunately, though, we chow from bottom blue like Kenny does, and we also have a guy top heli. Unfortunately, they don't chow at the same time, which is, you know, really hard to actually set up in real time. So they're just trying to get a kill on the point and just trust the other guy to help them out at the same time. Unfortunately, Vegas does get both of these kills. And once again, we're in a situation where they can start pushing up the map after they see Brandon over here towards his right side. And with those two kills, they kind of, you know, eliminate any of the pressure that we had. So they're kind of just like neutralizing our push once again, even though we're up 17 or 11 lives, you know, we only have a minute and some change to actually work with. So we need to actually get back on this point, start stopping time and getting some kills in the meantime there. Unfortunately though, all of these routes that we're trying to take get completely wiped. They get a clean four down and you know, once again, clean four down, you start pushing up, getting that map pressure, take that space that the enemy team doesn't have. And that's what happens here for us. You know, we go four down and now we're gonna be spawning back in our base. And this is a really, really bad situation. You know, look at the lives now, even they're starting to push up the map. This is actually a really bad situation for us. For something that could have been an instant win if we didn't get killed by the propane tank over here, you know, this is a round that we should not have lost. And it's really looking like it right now in this situation. But the big thing here is this spawn by Kenny underground here. He spawns under the ground. The rest of his team is spawning in our base. You know, it probably has something to do with Standy getting pushed up in our base on this railing over here, making sure that we don't exit out of these windows. And that, you know, puts some type of pressure to make us spawn underground. And Kenny is huge here because what happens here? So Standy here, he's just in a really hard position because you have to really overextend to kill him, whether you're jumping out one of these, you know, middle windows and trying to challenge him that way. And you know, him just being on top of us like that, it makes a situation where we don't know where he is up top on these railings. We just know he's there in some area, but he can just get free kills on anyone that's trying to, you know, turn and look up for him. So really hard position to actually kill him in. So if you're in this situation where you're on defense and you have the timing to go up this little ladder over here and get on top of here, it's a really good way to hold off any offensive reinforcements because once again, you're 100% getting kills if they're going to get out of this right window. So make sure you're doing that in the rank play games or whatever. It's just such a hard kill to get if he gets to this position. So uh, once again, going back to Kenny over here, he's the one who spawned underground. This is really important because what we need to do is just wait for him to make a play. The rest of our guys are in their base, kind of just waiting for some type of opening from Kenny. And that's exactly what he's going to do here. So going back to Kenny over here, he was the one who spawned underground. He is going to have to make a play for the rest of our team to actually get out of this base. Because he's the one who spawned on the ground, he's going to be the one that has to make this play. It's his duty to actually try and create a gap in the setup for Vegas so that the rest of our team has something to work with with that gap. You know, once he makes this play going towards their side underground stairs and killing this guy who's going to be at the top propane tank, he is creating a gap in the setup that they have to worry about. He is now a threat on the other side of the map. And if they want to make sure that everything is solidified in this round and that they just have to worry about their front base, they need to make sure they're accounting for him and killing him so that they can focus on the rest of our team. So you see the play he makes over here. The rest of our guys are just waiting for some type of opening to happen. He gets the opening on Purge, top propane. And as you'll see the arrows of Vegas right here, they're both turning towards number one, Kenny, trying to find him because they know he's a threat on the flank. And this creates a distraction for the rest of our team to start making some plays, getting out of these windows. So as you'll see here, number six and number seven, both looking. Unfortunately for Shotzi over here, number five wasn't one of those guys who turned to look for Kenny. So uh, this actually makes the other guys start activating, starting to get some timings, trying to get some sort of pressure relieved towards our front base because they know Kenny is still alive. They're going to be trying to look for him and they know if they get some kills, they can start really getting back onto the point and we still have a chance in this round. Unfortunately, Standy does get a kill at the top railing over here, but he's just going to get traded out. He gets weak from Kenny. You know, Pred gets this kill. Now we get the trade kill. Now we can start pushing up. Number five, we know he's still here towards this green tarp. We can start team working him. Kenny actually does get this kill from the top propane, so he doesn't even need the help of these guys at the base. So Kenny here getting all of these kills to relieve the pressure in the front of our base.
face and look at the situation now 10 to 8 lives we didn't really lose that many lives in that you know really hard situation that we had come out of so now we have some map pressure going towards this a side as you see here we have number one pushed up top row pain he can start overlooking to see if we can find this last guy number seven and this is a situation where we can start moving towards the point ourselves so if we go back what was a really bad situation for us this underground spawn and play by kenny really opens things up for us and the teamwork that these guys use to actually start moving with the pressure that kenny is making and start getting these trade kills on these guys in our front base is so huge and that leads us to a three down and as you'll see here kenny even jumps off the top row pane gets a huge one-on-one -on -one kill on nero and once i saw him get this kill i knew it was wraps i knew we were going to win this round because that is such a huge one-on-one -on -one. uh if nero is able to stay alive here and kill kenny uh it still makes some things really sketchy because nero is still going to be live towards this right street you know the lives are still pretty even and you know we only have 30 seconds to get on this point and we would still have to be worrying about nero towards this right side but you know nero sees him first but kenny is able to get the crazy shots off on him to actually win that one-on-one -on -one. so now we're in a really good setup to start putting some more pressure on their base 10 to 7 lives we're holding all these crosses so that they can't get out of these windows unfortunately ant dies on point here but you know the rest of our guys are still staying alive ag is still capping the point we have some guys watching the cross for him on this b side and unfortunately standing is still in their underground over here i thought he was going to pinch towards the bottom blue try to kill this guy on a point i believe that's what kenny's also thinking uh so he's not expecting standy to be underground still here so unfortunately he does lose that gunfight but you see the trades on the right side of the map the more important side with the a point you know almost at two ticks now we get some really good trades over there you know ag brandon and ant are all able to get some trade kills we still have two guys alive we're still pre putting pressure on this point ant wins another one-on-one -on, -one on the point he's starting to cap now six to three lives we have number one kenny off spawn watching his cross for ant so he can get some shots off get any of them weak to help teamwork for ant he's actually able to get one kill gets another one super weak for ant and we're able to get this round win it was a huge round win because offenses aren't really that easy on this map so if you're able to get that initial pressure like we did uh unfortunately we did get blown up by the propane tank but we, you know we still battled back even though we were put in a situation where they were basically in a scenario where they can spawn kill us so kenny opening things up for us uh relieving that pressure and then everyone else you know team working off of that was super good and look at kenny's scoreline 22 and 12 going to this round three and this is where you know we end up capping things off with this defensive win it was just a really impressive win uh by the guys after you know going down 0-2 so the resilience of them to actually battle back like this you know even the comms they never really were worried or anything and you know in their minds they always knew that they could come back from this there wasn't really any doubt in them once they went down 0-2 uh so getting in that mindset and keeping that mindset even when you're down 0-2 was just super important for them and you know those guys are just really mature with that type of stuff so it really makes our job easier you know me and damon just you know making sure that you know they're still prepared for each of these maps uh with whatever we talk about beforehand but you know them staying in that same mindset of you know we can win this we can reverse sweep this it's nothing new or nothing we haven't done before is uh is super important and a lot of players aren't really able to do that and block that out of their mind uh but they're able to do that here and we were able to make sure that we cap this off you know in my opinion uh this was just a pretty solid defense overall there wasn't really any you know really scary scenario for us uh we're just playing trades getting pushed up on the map like you do on high rise as you see here 23 to 17 only 30 seconds left we get in a situation here where they're all spawning in their back base we have all of these windows covered you know as you see here we have the mid and right window which are the more important ones when you're know, obviously they're going to be trying to go towards that easier b site but in this case here you know we're still playing these trades making sure we're getting pushed up making sure that they're not getting out of these windows because they don't get out of these windows there's no way for them to get on the point and we can win the round easily so this is a situation where ain't flanks on the ground and it was just because he was weak he's just trying to make a play over here uh, but they're able to get through towards these mid windows and through this right side window or or their left side window i should say and get towards the point in my opinion you know super hindsight maybe brandon focuses more towards the mid and right window rather than the left window because if they're going to go towards that left window and go towards a we can always retake a later on it's just so much harder to retake towards the b side so maybe that's you know a hindsight something we could have done better uh, to not even let them get a chance at this point so when we were talking about the round we were saying you know something like this type of situation we shouldn't even be letting them get towards that b point um so that's you know something we can work on later on because we really just want to make sure that they don't even get a chance towards this b point uh because as you see here it gets just a little bit sketchy because they're able to get on point 
start getting some kills you know as you see top pro pain over here if brandon had died here and didn't get this kill on the b point you know it gets a really uh, scary scenario where they're starting to cap this b point and can start doing some sort of spawn trap transitions similar to how we did on our offense so we just want to eliminate all those type of scenarios in our gameplay and you know we even use a streak for it so you know in that case you know we shouldn't have to use a streak in this type of round you know obviously you would use it in this type of situation because of the time and because of the live count and because we're up 2-0 and can just instantly win off of it but it shouldn't be a round where we have to use a cruise missile and that's kind of what uh, we were getting at so if there's something for us to take away on this defense uh, it's definitely that and we're actually able to get some more of these kills after the cruise missile comes on in we win the round we go up 3-0 and this you know really catapults us and sets that momentum going into game four and game five and after we won the series we realized that you know this was just such an important map for us to actually get that momentum on and after we won that first round it was like they all had gotten set in uh gotten comfortable with everything and you know there was no turning back from there as you see here kenny 30 and 15 insane performance out of him and he was definitely the mvp uh for that map and probably for the series specifically so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this discussion about the high-rise control and the reverse sweep in general thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one